let's go to the stay on the GOP sure. for a second. Here's the latest poll, the CNN ORC. Largest number for Donald Trump. I think he's up to 41. Largest lead nationally, too. I've heard you use the term civil war within the Republican Party. Does that mean there'll be no survivors? Or what does that mean? No, it doesn't mean there'll be no survivors. What it means is the Republican Party right now is at war between the anybody but Trump crowd and the anybody but Cruz crowd. And they are going to fight to the death. And meanwhile, I think it's interesting because Kasich and Rubio and a couple of the other candidates are quietly picking up steam while the war of words is going on between... Kasich tied for number two in, uh, in New Hampshire right. with, uh, with Cruz. So you don't think it's fatal? You just think... so? What... I don't think it's fatal to any of the other candidates. So why is it any different too... from what went before? I mean, what, what's the, why is the consequence of this internal fighting any different from any other primary campaign? It's just that the depth and the breadth of the hatred is so deep in a way that it's never been... I've never seen in my lifetime in politics. The people who are against Ted Cruz, and many of these people are people who share his conservative philosophy. The people who are against him hate him so much that they, many of them, will vote for Hillary Clinton or stay home if he's the nominee. I want to talk not about Cruz, but Donald Trump. David Axelrod, obviously key advisor forever to Barack Obama, said in a New York Times piece, you know, I should, I'm I should be ashamed of myself that I missed this whole Trump thing. The Trump phenomenon is a variation on the Obama phenomenon. And I'm, again, paraphrasing, saying what people want is something that the incumbent who's leaving office is not. They want it. It was a reaction to George W. Bush that helped elect Barack Obama. And he says this path that Trump has taken successfully so far is a reaction to what the public thinks, or at least a chunk of it thinks, Barack Obama is. You buy in it or no? Well, I think more less than 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 what you said. It's more of the public's desire to have a cult of personality. So, what Barack Obama projected um, and reflected back to people was hope and change. What Donald Trump projects and reflects back to people is anger and bitterness. Yeah, but but Axelrod said uh, the president patient and deliberate exactly the things that Donald Trump or not. She doesn't buy it. Do you buy it or no? A little bit. No, I, do, I agree I with do. I agree with that part of it. Oh, you do. I, yeah, I do think that the electorate is reactionary in the sense that you know after eight years of one party, they they tend to swing to the other party and they tend to react in the same way um, towards people's personalities and go for different. And Trump is the un Obama. I think yes, it's fair however, to say. All would, drama, Trump, yeah. as opposed to no I drama. I would Obama. also argue that Trump is as much a creation of the media as anything else. And I cautioned back in July and August not to give this man a platform, not to pay too much attention to him. But every reporter under the sun went running, eating out of his hands to be in his graces and to have FaceTime with him. And I think that the media helped create the monster. So to honor your directive, let's go to the Democratic side. Here's a question that a young guy in Iowa, Taylor Gipple, first-time caucus goer, leaning Sanders, asked Hillary Clinton last night. It feels like there's a lot of young people like myself um, who are very passionate supporters of Bernie Sanders, and I just don't see the same enthusiasm um, from younger people for you. Um, in fact, uh, I've heard from quite a few uh, people my age that they think you're dishonest, um, mm -hmm. but I'd like to hear from you on why you feel the uh, enthusiasm isn't there. I don't want to speak to the dishonesty, but in terms of the enthusiasm, you've seen the poll numbers. Here they are, 18 to 24-year-olds, 68 to 21 percent NBC News poll for Sanders. That is the Achilles heel of your candidate, is it not? I don't actually think so, and Why I not? do think that there's an explanation here. So, you know, if you're talking about millennials, and I'm not denigrating the importance of their vote, but you are talking about the generation of people who right at this very moment know the least that they will ever know in their lives about politics, about life, about life experience, about success, about failure, and they are always, because they are young, looking for something new. But they're allowed without, to vote without, regardless without, of, of right, their limitations. Without a whole lot of detail. It yeah. is only when you get older and you begin to experience life that you realize that the devil is, in fact, in the detail. So it doesn't surprise me. I think the thing that surprises me most about Sanders is the difference in age, but it is not new in this country. From, you mean between the two candidates? No, the difference between him and the, oh, his I age see. and yeah, the millennials. Yeah. Age. It is not new in this country, whether you're talking about hippies or any other group of people, for young people to want something they perceive to be new and different, regardless of the ability of that thing to provide the type of government so that they need. You just aged out of this group. You buy this explanation or no? 
Um, and does no. it matter? I, I have a theory about this. I believe that the American people always want the most dynamic candidate. They always want the most likable candidate. So a Reagan or an Obama, on the one hand, they're visionaries. They're dynamic. They speak in big themes. They speak to the heart of the American people. Forget about whether you agree with them. Then you have your beer candidates, as I call them. Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, maybe Chris Christie. They can talk to normal people. They feel your pain. Yeah, okay? Hillary Clinton is a careerist. She's John Kerry. She's John McCain. She's the next in line. She may have the most experience. She bores people to tears. On that note, Andrew so. Cabral, we got to go. I'm sorry. She's the most qualified person in the history of this country to ever run for I the knew presidency. You'd get that and in. resumes Jennifer, don't win elections. We can continue. It's fine. I just but have to go. But experience does. There they are, Andrew Cabral, Jennifer Bissett. <laughs>